Welcome. Today's lesson is on the nitrogen cycle. The whole goal here today is try to not only tell you a little bit about the uh, nitrogen cycle, but really simplify it. Um, I've taught the nitrogen cycle about a million different ways, and every time I get a new diagram, and those diagrams that the book of publishers put out are confusing. There's so many of them. Take a look. And as you can see, depending on which particular diagram you look at, it's pretty complicated. However, if you look at it very, very carefully, you'll notice that it's pretty easy. There are basically four different parts to it. There's the inorganic side, the organic side, the process side, and of course, the kind of the rock stars of it all, the bacteria or the microbes. So today, I want to show you how to simplify the nitrogen cycle. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to do is I want you to, as you're kind of listening to me, go ahead and, and write some of this stuff down. Actually, all of it down. I would start, with, first of all, with the four boxes. And in each of the boxes, going from left to right, in one of the corners, like for instance, on the far left-hand corner, I want, to put, I want you to put the letter A, and then the second box, 1, and then late, and then leave the other one um, blank. These are the inorganic compounds that are used in the nitrogen cycle. And A, 1, and late remind me, anyway, of what needs to go into each box. Uh, when I was moving materials and things down from uh, Washington State, we had a moving company called A1. And A1 was notoriously late. And that's why I put A1 late. Anyway, uh, on the very first box, A, what you're going to do is you're going to write in it ammonia, NH3. That's the first inorganic compound we run into. And remember, nitrogen is a thing that's inside the soil um, and also in the air um, that the organisms, the organic organisms are. And by the way, the organic organisms are designated by the circles um, in the bottom. The second inorganic compound would be nitride, I. That's why there's a one. It reminds, it reminds me, instead of the A, you put the letter I, nitride, N-O-2. Then we get to the third slot, and we get to nitrate, NO3. Now, you may be wondering this time, what are the arrows for? Well, there's a process that allows the ammonia to go to nitrite, and then from nitrite to nitrate. Um, each one of those are controlled by a, a bacteria that we'll learn in just a second, and a process. Now, when we get all the way back, when the, um, the O3 comes off, then we get to nitrogen, N2. 78% of our atmosphere is made up of nitrogen gas. There must be a good reason for that, and we'll find out in just a second. And um, nitrates, uh, NO3, is kind of the candy for, for plants. Plants love this stuff. And the whole cycle is set up around making sure that we have enough nitrate in the soil to feed the plants. So you might be asking, why do plants need nitrogen? Well, the plants need nitrogen for two very basic things. First of all, DNA. It happens to be kind of the centerpiece of, of DNA, De uh, deoxy a nucleic acid, deoxyribose nucleic acid. Sorry about that, but nitrogen is kind of the kind of the featured um, element. Also, proteins also need a lot of, of nitrogen. Now, the reason the plants are, are around is they can be converting all the sunlight and all the all the nutrients into a glucose, which of course the next organic compound takes advantage of that, and that's animals. Animals need it for the same reason. Uh, the nitrogen is needed for DNA and also proteins. But all good things must come to an end. And of course, or organic organisms die. And when they do, they're leaving behind their, their nitrogen, which doesn't go on notice, by the way. And we have a, a group called decomposers. They're sap, uh, saprophytic uh, organisms. And what they basically do is they take advantage of anything that dies. Uh, it's a decomposer, the bacteria and fungi mostly, and break all of the um, compounds down basically to their most simplest form. They're really good 
at uh, recycling uh, nitrogen and get rid of most of it. But there is another process that we don't want to forget. Um, and one of the, the very first things that takes place, and we're going to talk about that this is, the processes are going to be in blue. And the first process I want to talk about is the nitrogen fixation cycle. It takes the nitrogen gas that's in the atmosphere and then shunts it down into the soil by way of uh, legumes, very specialized plants, things like alfalfas or medics. Uh, vetches, clovers, um, um, uh, trofoils, all of those have very specialized nodules inside the root system, which happen to have, as you might guess, is uh, bacteria. And we'll talk a little bit about what kind of bacteria is in the, the uh, nodes, uh, nodules in a second. There's another process called the saprotrophic uh, nutrition. That's happening at the organic level. When all those organic orga organisms dies, even the decomposers, those particular bacteria or organisms, like I said, mostly bacteria and fungi, are breaking down all of the, the uh, nitrogen compounds to get to their most simplest forms. And that typically, once the nitrates are broken down, then it's converted into ammonium and ammonium IUM, NH4, then it's ripe for the, uh, the next process, which is ammonification. Ammonification will uh, take that ammonia and turn it into ammonia, uh, NH3. So that leads us to the, the next one. Now, when we get to ammonia, which is NH3, then we have another process called nitrification, which is a two-part process. Nitrification is really oxidation steps. So it takes the uh, ammonia, NH3, lops off the hydrogen, and then puts um, some oxygen on to make it nitride. And then the next step is then going to add another oxygen to make it nitrate. And then, once we have the nitrate, then what happens is an, another group of organisms will start lopping off the oxygens and making it the nitrogen return back into the atmosphere in the form of nitric um, nit uh, nitrogen gas. So that's called denitrification. Now understand that not all of the nitrate ends up in the atmosphere. S there are some bacteria that kind of hold it back and then take it back to ammonia. And um, that's all happening in the soil. The uh, azetobacter, that's the, the, um, the bacteria that's holding some of those nitri uh, nitrates back in the soil so it can convert it back to ammonia. Now, the, one of the uh, rock stars of all this, the, not only the uh, azetobacter, but also nitro Simonis, what it does, it's very specific in being able to convert uh, the ammonia to nitride. Uh, remember the I, NO2. And then we have another called nitrobacter, and it's very specific to nitride to nitrate. And then the, the one that I kind of left out to the end, what you'll find in legumes in the nodules is rhizobium. I hope this has helped you, and I hope it's simplified it to some degree. Remember, just remember all uh, the inorganics, which is all of those squares, kind of in a row. Then remember your circles, which are the uh, organisms uh, in the organic uh, kind of region or, or layer. You remember all the processes, and also do not forget the guys that all make it happen, bacteria. So I hope this has helped you. We'll see you in the lab. Thanks. Bye.